the meeting of Wednesday, May 15th to order. Today we have four items on the agenda and I haven't received any requests for continuances or withdrawals, so I will hear them in the order that they appear on the agenda. I don't have any announcements and appeals. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the staff hearing officer on items not on today's agenda? No, seeing no one, we'll go to the first item, which is 254 San Julian Avenue. Would the applicant would like to come up? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Burden. The project at 254 San Julian is on about a 6,700 square foot lot um, in the non-appealable jurisdiction of the coastal zone. It is currently developed with a 1,000 square foot residence with an attached two car garage. Uh, the existing residence is non conforming to the um, 20 foot front and 6 foot interior setback. So you can see a portion of the garage in this rear bedroom um, encroach into the existing setbacks. The proposed project involves the construction of a 735 square foot um, second story addition, a 449 square feet of additions on the first floor an interior and facade remodel, a 39 square foot entry porch, and a new 208 square foot uh, balcony. So if we go to the floor plan, you can see the areas highlighted in blue on the first floor that are being added um, to create the, uh, I actually don't know the floor plan, on that plan. <laughs> to create Bigger bedrooms, a larger living space, um, and remodel the kitchen on the interior. The kitchen's being relocated from roughly in here to this back corner. And then the new second story, it's entirely new. So the area of the addition is occurring here. It's approximately six feet, six inches from the property line and that area. Um, the new second story does come out over the existing garage, but observes the required 20 foot front setback. Um, after all the proposed construction um, is completed, the resulting house will be approximately 2,190 square feet uh, with an attached two-car garage. I don't know that I have anything else highlighted in there. So if we go back to the site then, given the location of the existing development, um, it would be difficult to construct an addition um, that would conform to all required setbacks without having to significantly alter the existing structure. Um, the modification that the staff hearing officer is reviewing today is to allow a conforming alteration and addition to an existing non-conforming building that will change the basic exterior characteristics. So it is allowing the minor encroachment into the setback to remain for the existing structure and the minor or the five foot encroachment of the garage to encroach into that 20 foot front yard setback. It is not asking for any modification of the new construction. With that, staff recommends approval of the project, um, making the findings in the staff report. And I have one condition um, about if further demolition is completed other than what is indicated on the floor plans here um, for the non-conforming portions that the applicant uh, bring the project back into staff to evaluate whether the mod is still valid. Okay, great. Thank you. Would you like to state your name? 
for the record. I'm Jason Grant, the uh, agent for the owner um, and the designer of the project. Um, I think Kathleen's laid out everything quite well. Um, we just have it a, a, an, ex an existing building and uh, which is not conforming. Of course, everything we're proposing is will conform to obviously all setbacks. Um, and so I think it's that there's our project. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Um, I do have a clarifying question. The required interior sit setback is six feet, not ten, right? Correct. Okay, so there's some one point or this in the typo. Or it does both. Okay, so it's six foot. And um, the first story addition is proposed at six six, so it's outside of the setback. But the second story is actually closer to nine and a half, almost ten. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then same with the second story, the new second story. Um, I think it's not scaled here, but it's five feet further than the required front setback. That's that's correct. So you're not going up. Pushing the limits, setback to setback. Your your second story is setback more than what's allowed. It, it, exactly, and, and just to, to further comment on that, um, we've gone through our, at least a conceptual and architectural review, and there's been an asked. Uh, it was asked to kind of reduce down the size, okay. and so on the redesign. Just just to, I mean, I, I know we're looking at these plans here. That's actually coming back an additional five feet, roughly, to kind of get our square footage down and to kind of bring a little more relief to that kind of front elevation. Just. Just to let you know, that's kind of the direction we're going. Okay. You know, per our architecture review and the comments that were made. Okay. All right. So this this doesn't respond to the, it, it to the minutes that are in my packet. Right. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to address the staff hearing officer on 254 San Julian Avenue? No. I did receive two letters. One from Ms. Paula Westbury, um, expressing concerns on our project on the project. I gave them a copy. And then the second one is just an email we received from a neighbor on San Miguel uh, stating that uh, all improvements must meet Santa Barbara codes for buildings and all setbacks, both interior and exterior. Codes are set to maintain a pleasant city. Giving a variance or modification to one individual can be detrimental to many adjacent individuals. Why hurt many to mollify one? Once a person gets a mod Modification approval, the next person wants similar special attention until the code becomes meaningless. Stop it at the source. Approve no modification or variance. Ron Nichols. So I'll close the public hearing. Um, I went out to the site um, and visited the neighborhood, and actually I have re reviewed several projects in the neighborhood over the last couple months. Um, and they were similar to this in that the new additions respected the um, the setbacks, however, given the existing development um, and that they were going to story, it changes the basic exterior characteristics and then you're in for the modification. Um, however, you're not intensifying the encroachments. It's still the way our code is. If you do the two-step process, you add and um, change the need. It sends it's not going to need a mod. So um, I like the fact that your proposed additions are pulled back away from the setbacks. And it's good to hear that in the front setback, it's going to be pulled back even more. Um, and uh, I think it is an appropriate improvement for your parcel. Um, and it represents um, it represents an appropriate improvement. So I think that I could make the findings um, in that uh, the new addition meets the setbacks. It has adequate open yard area. The existing front setback is similar to the other setbacks along the street. There's an existing neighbor. Um, I hear that is set back a little bit more, but when you look to the neighbor to the north, it's closer. So in terms of the front setback, it is a mixture, and you're not proposing new habitable space within the front setback. And so with those comments, I can make the findings outlined in the staff report. Um, and approve the project. I just have actually one question and it doesn't have to do with my approval per se, but the transportation staff is looking at the garage door width. It seems kind of narrow. That's something they have looked at the garage door width. The existing conditions, the way that the front porch relates to the garage door, mm -hmm. kind of limit the, the area that you can open the garage door. Right. Um, I think there's some conflict in the plan. One says 14.6, it scales to 14.6, one says 15. Mm -hmm. I think in the field, it was closer to 15. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> their optimal uh, 
width of a garage door is 17 feet, mm -hmm. um, but given the constraints of the lot, they're willing to work with the applicant to get somewhere between what is currently their 15 feet and the 17 feet, um, still being able to make the maneuver around that front okay. porch. Okay. Yeah, that was my, that was more of a comment. It's really not in my purview, but it was just a question I had when I looked mm -hmm. at the plans. Um, okay. So I'll make the findings outlined in the staff report subject to the condition that staff proposed. I don't believe I need to add any additional comments, so that will just be the one. And my action is appealable to the Planning Commission within 10 calendar days, and they also have oversight of all my actions, and if they felt this warranted additional discussion before them, they could call it up during that same 10-day appeal period. And if that was to occur, Suzanne would contact you. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. The next project is 1676 Franceschi Road. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. I pulled out nice. just the pages that are relative to the mod. I have the rest over here. Okay. <laughs> you have some nice colors there. I like that. Yes. So this project on Franceschi Road is a two-acre site. It's located in the Hillside Design District. And it is currently developed, the site is currently developed with an approximately 5,000 square foot um, multi story residence. The uh, proposed project includes the demolition of the existing residence, so you're not seeing an existing site plan here, you're seeing the proposed site plan. Um, the construction of the new residence is, the new residence would be approximately 6,500 square feet, approximately three stories. Uh, with an attached 750 square foot three car garage. The proposal also includes two uncovered parking spaces, a 200 square foot detached accessory building, um, new site walls and gates, new landscaping, and a new pool that's back here at the rear. The discretionary applications before the staff hearing officer today are a modification to allow a detached accessory building to be located within a front yard and a modification to allow fences and walls to exceed the maximum allowable height of three and a half feet when located within 10 feet of a front property line. As we look at the site plan, you can see the lot lines are highlighted in purple, and the setback is highlighted in orange. They have frontage along a private road and a portion of Franceschi um, along their primary frontage over here. And then there's another private road. It's actually the same private road kind of loops through this development and then comes back out here. So this is a secondary um, front yard. So the first requested modification is to allow the proposed accessory structure to be located in the primary front yard. Um, a majority of this lot, because of the two front yards, is considered front yards due to the location of the, the residence, our definition. Um, of front yard and the design of that residence with the attached garage. So conforming locations are very limited due to these constraints of the proposed development and the two front yards. The location of the accessory building is approximately 132 um, feet away from the primary frontage off of Franceschi. And, um, Staff is recommending a condition be added that the detached accessory building shall not be used as a separate dwelling unit. Uh, with respect to this second mod, it's along this uh, frontage. There's an existing retaining wall that is approximately 10 feet in height. So let me go back. You can see how the, the site slopes, and this would be the secondary frontage. There's the 10-foot wall. And the applicant is proposing to put a three-and-a-half-foot tall guardrail at the top of that retaining wall. As a part of the proposal, they are terracing the slope and um, creating usable landscape areas for some planting of uh, vines, correct? Mm -hmm. Great vines. Um, but the way they have terraced it is such that the mod would just be for the guardrail above this retaining wall. Each of these terraces is a setback more than five feet from every wall. Um, therefore, the mod's only for the guardrail, which is a safety issue. 
as staff feels that the addition of that guardrail um, will not have an impact on adjacent neighbors and actually provides a safety element and feels that that lot is supportable. The project was reviewed and you can look at the landscape and plan to see the, the terracing. Well, in here it shows the wall two feet away. There's a change from your architectural plan. You show it immediately atop and they show it set back. So. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, but you can see how they're terracing back to have that planting area. Okay, right. Um, the single family design board reviewed the project on March 25th and they found that the location of the accessory building as well as the terracing of walls at the southerly end of the property were acceptable and the board stated the, the requested modifications were aesthetically appropriate and did not uh, propose <laughs> did not pose any consistency issues with the single family residential design guidelines. Staff recommends approval of the project subject to the findings and conditions in the staff report. Great, thank you. Would you like to state your name for the record and add additional comments? Yes, thanks. Kurt Bedeen, uh, architect and agent for the owner. Um, I'd just like to uh, look at the site plan again and point out a, a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> as was mentioned, we actually started with the uh, accessory structure in the other front yard uh, as adjacent to the uh, pool area and to, to uh, kind of uh, use the function of it in relation to the pool. But the um, one of the things, there are several things that happened after we had uh, come up with that initial design. One is that we found that uh, standing out right in this area, which is currently there is a patio right there, is you have views of, and you're sort of looking down over the top of uh, several houses that are immediately adjacent, including this one, um, suddenly becomes visible, which is not visible from anywhere else. Well, I would just say anywhere else. It's not visible from the existing house. Um, but once you go down, you start to see these other residences. And um, so there's a, um, there's a bit of an, yeah. Uh, issue both in terms of visual impact um, to the neighbors as well as privacy uh, issue and the uh, the primary function of the accessory structure was a, a, was to be an exercise room so um, because of the fact that we also you know when we initially uh, made the application it wasn't clear that this was also um, going to be considered a front yard so we didn't know we had two front yards so then when we found that out and we realized uh, no matter where we put it, we were going to be in a front yard. Um, we we found that this location was not only preferable in terms of privacy for uh, the owner's purposes, but also was not visible uh, from the street because of the distance, the existing vegetation that's down here, the very heavy vegetation that separates us from our neighbor to the east, or west rather. West. Um, and I have since also uh, walked the neighboring property uh, with the the neighbor, and um, it is so heavy, uh, the layers of mature, tall vegetation separating the properties, and the fact that this, this is also partially uh, sunk in, it's about 30 inches into grade at this point, that it's just simply not going to be visible to anyone or to the street. Um, so that... That seemed like uh, the the preferable uh, solution all around. Um, and then uh, just to comment on the um, uh, the, the the fence uh, on the lower wall, I, I, I didn't realize obviously that the, that the landscape architect had designed the railing being back two feet away from the wall, and I'm fine with that. So, and I think you know visually, obviously looking at the pictures, if the railing is back a couple of feet, that's going to um, make it much less imposing uh, for an already imposing condition. So, we, we, you know, we're happy to make that change and pull it back. Okay. Um, the other question I have is on this plan, it says uh, item 28, uh, existing trees to be removed. And mm -hmm. then I was trying to figure out what the species are because I went out to the site and they look like they might be oaks. No. You know what? Because uh, on, but on the landscape. I think they're actually. I believe they're low pots. Okay. Because uh, on the landscape plan, it looks like they might be saved. 
Okay. Um, so, well, it's is there no oaks in this area? Do you know? No, there's no oaks. These, in fact, uh, this is existing trees. orchard yeah. in here, and so all. Unless I'm mistaken, and I've looked at this several times, and okay. I, and I, in fact, I submitted photographs of that area. I have a way. Okay. Uh, do I? No, they're all on here. They'd be all on the. Yeah. Okay, let's look and see. Yeah, so uh, let's see if this was the supplemental one that I. Okay. Now, this was the initial. Let's see. I think it's towards the end here that I provided. Yeah, so this is um, looking south. For the sexual structure location, so I'm thinking it's this one. I think it's mm -hmm. these two right here. That's not what I saw. Hmm. I think I was over here more. Uh, where in relation to this is the, the driveway here? Well, the, it's the, almost directly opposite the garage. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I walked down that. So there's mm -hmm. no picture. So um, in fact, on here, okay, here's the existing garage. Where's yeah. the pavement end? So I walked down, I saw the two palm trees. It, it ends right about where we were showing it ending here. Okay, and I saw the so, two palm trees, and yeah. I walked down more, and I saw, there's, there's oranges in here, right, yeah. in this area? Yeah, and other things. Not, I think the oranges actually start down a little bit lower. There's a couple that come up, a couple in here. So maybe but I headed this way then, could be. versus that way. Yeah. It wasn't staked or anything, so I just... Right, right. Okay, but you're telling me they're not. They're not. They're not oaks. What I Definitely saw. not oaks. Yeah. These two aren't. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I think those are my questions for right now. Um, okay. So I'd like to open the public hearing. I do have a request to speak from Shirley Forge or Force. Oh. Force. If you'd like to come up to the table, you can. Here's a microphone right here. Good morning. Hi. I'm. Uh, I live uh, at 1674 Franceschi. I'm at the end, end of the private lane, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm interested in the property, and I was interested to see. Uh, I read about a fence and a, and all. I wondered where that was going to be, uh, and what. The property. I went up there when it was for sale, and I don't blame them for tearing the house down. It's very convoluted, and the four worst bathrooms I've ever seen in my life. But the view from the south, uh, it goes down a slope. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I'm, what I'm curious about is what the plans are for the side of the property by the driveway that that goes along the private lane that oh, our six houses are on. Okay, so when you come off Franceschi and you turn up here to go to his to go to the new house, so yeah. down this way? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm at the end of, of the private this. private. So drive. does it where it curves yeah. back around and comes down here? Or well you get to my house and there's a circular driveway which people tend to use for a turnaround. Uh, <laughs> There are six houses on this private drive, and theirs is the first one on the right as you go Okay, down. yeah, See, so actually, here's the road, here's the road I'm, here, I'm and this is the driveway. Right. The, okay, do you want to well, I just want to mention one thing. I, it was stated that this connects to this. It's this one It's actually here. Franceschi Road that comes around and connects to this, I believe. I, I don't think, this, this, is a, this is a dead end. Right. That's what she's yeah, saying, yes. it, it, my house. Right, yeah. right. And sometimes so. people come and they think it goes beyond and it only goes to the back of my garage, but uh -huh. they don't see that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so I get a lot of turnarounds and they run over my sprinkler system and mm -hmm. it's not nice. Anyway, but so yeah. I'm, I'm very interested in what things look like and how they are and, mm -hmm. and all, and I'm just... just well, if, Kurt, uh, if you want to, what they were planning for this, this is their driveway. Yeah, correct. So okay. this is this is the existing I'm driveway. I'm wondering what they're going to do here. Yeah, I, the, well, the I, I, I can explain it. Where? There, so there's a um, six foot high stone wall that starts actually on top of this uh, this low wall that's, that occurs on the property, 
and then it comes across, but that's 20 feet back from the road edge. Oh, I see. Cause see and then there's going to be a gate. Noticeable. Yeah, I wondered about yeah. a gate. Uh -huh. and that, uh, is and this here already? No. So no the modification a... that he's requesting is at this end of the property where there is an existing um, retaining wall. Here's a picture of it. Oh. And so what they're proposing. That's the other end of the property. Yeah. So that's this right. is existing, and they're proposing to put a guardrail. Um, now oh, two I feet see. back so uh -huh. that it would protect people or dogs from running off and in, into the street. Mm -hmm. So what the modification is that they're requesting is for this side of the property. Um, okay, and this side conforms. That's not but, over here. No, but he, um, Kurt can explain so you, so you know what's going on, which would be visible for you on along the driveway. <laughs> so, okay. so it's a stone wall six foot high with a gate at the driveway. And it curves around like this. These are all existing big boulders that are in the front yard. Uh -huh. And then the, the wall proper stops, and then it's a series of uh, columns, also six foot, six inches high, I think, mm -hmm. with um, wrought iron uh, gate or, or fencing uh -huh. in, in between. Yeah, that sounds attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is complete new, uh, well, except for the oaks, which are stained. Yeah, there's, there's a, not much here. There's a, a series of. Um, olive trees that are going to be planted along the road oh, uh -huh. and then uh, low growing sh flowering shrubs and actually uh, roses are going to be espaliered on the on the wrought iron in between the oh, columns wow. so it's going to be really Funny pretty enough there for roses. <laughs> well <laughs> i'm not the landscape architect but yeah that's what she's calling uh -huh. for yeah. okay well as i say i'm interested because i go by there every single day and uh and this work is going to be uh, kind of a <laughs> <laughs> kind of a nuisance for about a year. Yes, that's right. Um, but anyway, uh, I, but the I, good thing is that because it's a large property, the you know the, we won't be parking vehicles in the street here. There's plenty of driveway area for the yeah, construction it's vehicles only to two be on the side. A three-car garage and two parking spaces, and I thought, well, what if they have a a party uh, where there's no parking on the private drive? It's too narrow. Right. Right. Well, there's, you know, the, officially these area. are two, there's, we're showing two additional spaces here, but mm -hmm. it, there's plenty of area for additional now. cars yeah. to park in yeah. front of the, yeah. uh, in front of the garage. So if they have a party, it'll, all the parking will be up here. Mm, okay. Yeah. So this is the entrance to the driveway. Mm hmm Well, that's very interesting. Um, I just was interested to see what was planned. Sure. Oh, I wish the house had <laughs> Spanish-style roof. Mm. Well, the parts that are before the staff hearing officer today is the accessory structure in the front yard and the fence along the private driveway. The single-family design board, they have purview over the actual design of the house. And since the house is within the setbacks, they have the open yard area, it's not over height, um, my review is limited to just these two areas. So what you can do is today. request, yeah, today. We can I just happen to really like Spanish architecture. My house is a Spanish, uh, mm -hmm. Spanish architecture with a tile. Well, if tile you, roof. you receive I, the, I like that the best. Yeah, this you, is too modern for me, but it, you don't see it from the road. It's attractive. Yeah. Well, you can request at our public counter to be put on the mailing list for the future design review boards and comment on the design um, no, for I, them if you wish. I'm not a troublemaker. I mean, you know, that's, that's a perfectly acceptable design. You don't really see it from the road anyway. Right, set back bar. Okay, well, great. Thank you for coming down. Okay, I guess. Did you have more comments? Understand now. So, oh. thank you very okay. much. Great, yeah, sure. Thank you. Is there anyone thank else who. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to address the staff hearing officer on 1676 Franceschi Road? See, no one, we did receive a letter from Ms. Paula Westbury uh, expressing concerns with the project. So I'll close the public hearing. Um, like I said, I went out to the site and, and looked at the proposed areas. Um, my main concern regarding the accessory structure is not its location. I understand either way where you put it, um, it's going to be in the front setback. I actually agree that um, where it's proposed is more appropriate than in the rear because it is not visible given the topography and the vegetation from the private uh, road over here. 
my concern related to the trees, but it's good to hear that it's not, they're not oaks. Um, if they were oaks, I was going to ask that they be saved, but it's interesting, so they're not. Um, in regards to the fence, uh, I had the question regarding the location of the guard well because there was a discrepancy, and then also just a question in general, why it can't meet, why can't it be put back, put five feet from the um, existing retaining wall instead of, you know, right on it or two feet away, what was, what's the... Okay, <clears throat> um, well, it's a, it's quite a steep bank as it is right now, uh, right off of the wall, um, and um, Yeah, I you know I suppose we could we could study moving it back a bit further. There's there's so much vegetation there right now, uh, so we're basically you know we're going off the um, uh, the to the topography as given by the um, surveyor. But um, well, in this instance, it looks like it's being filled behind there because this little dotted line isn't this existing gray. Yeah, yeah, and so, I I'm sorry. not sure why they're doing that other than because it does look like it meets existing grade at the first wall there. Um, so this this was a grading plan developed by the uh, landscape architect and I'm I don't I, I'm not really certain. It looks like that you know that that grade could be left where it is mm -hmm. um, on that on that lower slope as long as we came up and met it at the same point up here. Um, The other thing I'm noticing is it looks, oh, three foot six high, yeah, okay. So, um, you know, we could study moving it back further. I don't, I don't really know why, why it has to be two feet away. Um, I, I think that, we, you know, we, uh, obviously we have uh, some, these are re representing stone steps going up, up the slope so that it's possible to access these lower slope areas uh, with steps. And we'd want to make sure at this point that we had enough room to, to come down here and not, you know, be impinged by the gate. So I'm thinking that, you know, uh, at the two, well, maybe here it's not an issue. It could just be moved further up the slope. Here it's not an issue, but here it might be. So we could, we could look at, you know, shifting the gate or the fencing back further um, for that length. I don't, I don't see, actually, I don't see why we couldn't do that. So move it back five feet. So it'd be a five foot. Here's your. Is this yours, or is yes, this still a landscape? Is so here. Yeah. And we just took the the grading changes off of the the Plus, landscape architect. Yeah, it, looks um, it looks slightly different because it's a different scale, I believe. But this was just this is just a copy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, of the, yeah, doing five feet would allow for a little more landscaping. This shows that there's landscaping going over the wall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I the only other argument I can think of why we'd like to keep it where it's shown is that um, it is actually going to be a, a functioning vineyard. Oh. And uh, it's all grapes that are planned for this area. So, you know, the further we move that, that fence up the hill, the less room we have. Um, and these are, you know, these are relatively narrow um, um, terraces. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then we're taking this, the, which, now, which now would be the largest terrace area, and we're reducing that another three feet. So, you know, then we end up with just a, a very, you know, relatively small terrace again. Um, for planting, so I. So this know. is here's fourteen, so it'd be twelve, mm -hmm. five. Well, that's and this at the widest. High? That's at the widest point, or or at the section rather, mm -hmm. at the section. Then it it narrows down. I yeah. Let's look at the scale there. That's eight scale. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. I think I set it down. So, so let's see. Down at this end, we have almost eight, and down at the deepest end. It's 15, so it goes from 15 to 8. 
Um, so I, again, I, I just, you know, if we were coming back three, then we'd be five at this mm -hmm. end and ten at this end. So well, it's still relatively for 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 vineyard planting. It's still relatively narrow terrace and and a rather steep hillside. So the mm -hmm. The, you know, the difficulty of um, trying to get walkable, workable vineyard areas, you know, with 30-inch high stone walls and all that. It just, just compresses it further, that's all. So what about if you just push it back another foot then, so three feet? That would give a good area, a little more visual distance as you're coming down the road. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the other thing... It, I'm not sure if it shows what this is going to look like, but I was proposing a condition that would be open design versus a solid wall. Is there is an there? elevation on I'm our I'm trying drawings. to think if I went yeah. through. It's right here. Right, that's it. Right here. So it's, a, it, it's hard to see, but it's basically a, sort of like a branch. It's blurry. <laughs> a branch configuration, but it's wrought iron. It's just thin wrought iron. Okay, so that would be yes. open design. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the other thing I'd mention is that, you know, over time, it's just going to get grown over like like the current wall is. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the planting is not only going to come down the wall, it's going to go up the fence. Uh, eventually, that's just going to be greened out mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So I, I don't know that a foot is really going to, in the long run, really going to make a difference in terms of making it a better or less impactful visual. But, I'm, you know, if that's your condition, of course, we would comply. Okay. All right. So then, getting back to the or getting back to the accessory structure. Um, um, I like I said, I think it's an appropriate location. It's an appropriate size. It's small. It's what was it? Two hundred square feet. A little yes. over two hundred. Or no, we're limited to two hundred. Okay, so That's, yeah. It's 200 square feet, so it's a small size. Um, there won't be any oak trees affected. And um, you know what? The lot size is actually two acres, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the findings, it says 1.3. Um, So given, I'm going to add in the findings, given the small size of the location, of the accessory structure of 200 square feet, um, the fact it's, a, it already says the fact it's 132 feet from the front yard, from the, um, from the, the street, and it's not visible from the public or private streets, I, I find I can make the findings. Um, in regards to the modification for the fence, Oh, you know the other question I have actually, Suzanne. Um, it's showing the property line. Is this a is this a private driveway or is it a private street? It's considered a private road. So the front setback would actually be from the edge of the right of way, right? Correct. So this this line here will have to be denoted farther back. I don't know what this is. If that would be considered an encroachment or not, but that would green. Hmm. The putting green there. Uh, this yeah, it's putting green. Yeah. So that's something during plan check that might be a comment looking at what is you know, pushing this back. What does that do with the improvements? But, um, but in terms of the wall, um, I like the fact that it's set back, providing a buffer between the existing retaining wall, which looking at the pictures is not real aesthetically pleasing. Right. And we so are we'll plastering that wall, by the way. Oh, okay, I, I didn't see that in the notes. It, it's on our elevation. Yeah, okay. we're covering the whole thing with plaster. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'll look a lot and, better. And it will be an uh, integral color. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's better. Mm -hmm. um, so given the setback, and I am going to put a condition that will be a three-foot buffer from the top of the retaining wall um, to provide adequate area for landscaping, I feel I can make that finding. Um, in regards to the condition, staff is proposing a condition that the um, detached accessory building shall not be used as a separate dwelling unit. And are you going to require a, z a zoning compliance declaration, too, or just the condition? Uh, it was just the condition. Um, originally, it was labeled casita, small right. house. Oh. So we didn't want it to be construed as being a separate unit. Okay, all right. Um, so I, and you're fine with that 
yes. proposed commission. Yep. We and just like the word casita. This wasn't <laughs> that's second kind of, kind of <laughs> <laughs> And then I do want to have the two additional conditions. One, that the guardrail shall be an open fence design. And two, that the guardrail be three feet from the existing retaining wall. Okay. okay. So with those three conditions, I make the findings as revised in the staff report and approve your project. And my action is appealable to the Planning Commission within 10 calendar days. And they also have oversight authority of all my actions. And if they felt this warranted additional discussion before them, they could call it up during that same 10-day appeal period. And if that was, any of those would occur, Suzanne would contact you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. The next, let's talk that issue over here, but not over there. Yeah. The next project is... Uh, 1727 Cai Boca del Canyon. The applicant wants to come up. Good morning. Good morning. Site at 1727 Calle Boca de Pignon is approximately 6,560 square feet. It is currently developed with a 1,313 square foot two story residence with an attached garage and carport. The proposal includes construction of a 120 square foot addition within the existing footprint and volume of the existing residence. The discretionary application required. Um, is a modification to allow a second story to be located within 20 feet of the front property line. Um, I have the archive plans for the record. You can see the um, site plans with the property lines highlighted in purple. The setback that we are dealing with is the 20 foot setback right here at the front property line. You can see the location of the existing residence. And when we go to the second page here, you can see the design of the house when it was originally developed on the second floor allowed for an open space area here um, adjacent to a bedroom with a low kind of guardrail um, that was open to the living room below. What the applicant is proposing to do is to can expand that upstairs bedroom. up here at the top and um, enlarge that bedroom so that the second floor is extended all the way to the fireplace um, that was previously only in the living room below. Um, I should clarify there is not a fireplace within the bedroom. <laughs> it's just the chimney uh, that extends there. So because this building was constructed um, in its current location I believe at the time that it was originally developed, they held back that second story 20 feet and allowed the um, first story to encroach. And they got a modification for the portions of the building um, that encroached into the 15 foot front yard setback for one story. Um, staff feels that the proposed addition does not have any adverse impacts to the adjacent neighbors. Um, I think you have photographs. You can see that the windows that are in that second story volume already exist. They're not proposing any new windows. Um, they currently had views out those windows from the area where the handrail was. So staff doesn't see any potential new adverse impacts to adjacent neighbors. It's in this area. Staff recommends approval of the um, modification to allow the second story to encroach into the required 20-foot setback and um, as submitted without any conditions. Okay, great. Thank you. Would you like to state your name for the record and add any additional comments? Nathan Lynn, um, the designer for Davis Hayden. Um, no additional comments. Okay, great. Thank you. 
I'd like to open the public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to address the staff hearing officer on 1727 Calle Boca del Cano? Nope, see no one. We did receive a letter from Mr. Paula Westbury. It basically oh, wants the second story to remain as is. Well, it says this one is in already, never should have added within the front and side setback. So expressing concerns with the project. I'll close the public hearing. Um, I did go out to the site and I met the, the property owner, one of the property owners there. She was nice and led me around. Thank you. Um, my main concern actually lies with something that's actually not in my purview. Although I know the windows are existing, they're not directly, you can't reach them and look right out on them. However, the window that I'd have the most concerns with is outside of the setback, so it's not even in my purview. Um, and also, given the, giving the layout of the existing development, even if it was, I'm not sure it would have a significant impact in that. Here's the existing house here, so its layout is um, you'd be looking at the window here, but you're still looking kind of at the house versus in their area. And there's a lot of landscaping on that side, as you can see in the picture. So um, in regards to the window location, um, and it's, not, it's not in the setback. Um, in regards to the adding of the floor area within the front setback, Typically, we don't support new floor area within the front setback. However, in this instance, it is different. It's an existing um, building. It's existing volume. It's already there. So adding a floor uh, in that area wouldn't impact significantly the neighborhood, and you probably wouldn't even notice it from the exterior of the building. Um, so given those facts, I can make the finding outlined in the staff report and approve the project. Staff not proposing any conditions, and I don't feel any additional conditions are warranted. Thank so, you. yeah, uh, it'll be approved as submitted. My action is appealable to the Planning Commission within 10 calendar days. And as you heard me say on the other ones, they have oversight authority of all my actions. And if they felt this warranted additional discussion before them, they could call it up during that same 10 day appeal period. And if that was to occur, Suzanne would contact you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Last item is 1611 Olive Street. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Like to Hi. This is 1611 Olive Street. This is a 14,629 square foot lot. It's owned R3. And it's developed with a 1,679 square foot single family dwelling that was built in the early 20s. Um, also on the site is a as built 415 square foot yurt structure and uh, a meditation dome. Um, there's also a storage shed and a bathhouse. Uh, these structures are all as built and um, and subject to city review currently. Uh, and there's also a second story deck that was constructed uh, on the main house uh, that would be permitted as part of this process. Uh, before you today is a parking modification uh, for the yurt structure. The city considers this a, a dwelling unit based on um, its use. There's a kitchen in it, uh, and it, it acts as a studio unit. Uh, also, um, a setback modification, the meditation dome encroaches three and a half feet into the six-foot interior setback. Uh, for parking, there are three existing parking spaces uh, that are in attached garages to the main building. 
uh, the applicant is proposing to use one of those three parking spaces as parking for the yurt structure. The, the ordinance requires two parking spaces for the single family unit. Uh, this garage was original. It was built in the 20s, and I believe its depth is 16 feet. The current standard is 20 feet, and, um, and this space also doesn't meet the city's um, parking design maneuvering templates. So city staff is not supporting using these existing spaces to, to park the yurt. Um, because the, the yurt, um, according to transportation planning staff, would have a parking demand of um, one space or less. Uh, so with increased demand, um, uh, the staff is supporting having one parking space rather than two for the yurt uh, and is um, recommending a condition that that parking space be an uncovered parking space. There is um, adequate area over here. Uh, the applicant has been in conversation with transportation planning staff about a configuration of that space that would serve as both a, a parking space and, um, and some turnaround area for, for these two spaces. Uh, there is an existing carport right here that is also removed as part of the project. It's kind of being used as a patio cover currently. Um, the staff is recommending a condition that um, this be uh, re-landscaped, the part that isn't used for parking or turnaround. The ordinance allows for an encroachment of an uh, uncovered parking space up to three feet into the interior setback, but that's subject to review and approval by the ABR. So it's not a guarantee that it can get down to three feet. Uh, six feet is the standard for uncovered parking. Um, but that the three feet is what um, the applicant and transportation planning staff were, were looking at. Um, the other decision before you is this uh, encroachment for this meditation dome. Um, this dome is 10 feet in diameter. It has no floor area because the floor to ceiling height is less than five feet. Um, on the common property line is a, an existing eight foot tall wood fence. So this, this dome is virtually undetectable from the adjacent property and considering it's um, special construction, uh, it's quiet use, and um, the location of this fence, um, staff is recommending approval of, of the dome without any changes. Uh, and that concludes um, my remarks. I just want to clarify something. You were saying staff's not recommending using the existing parking spaces, but then you described how this they need to turn around for this, so what you had meant that not recommending approval of this one as a parking space, but these two would remain. Uh, that's correct. So these are these are larger. So I'll, I'll clarify. So staff doesn't doesn't support using the three existing parking spaces to to provide the parking for both the um, permitted house and the yurt. Okay. Um, so um, staff staff would actually support losing this space and using this for habitable space or storage um, because the two parking spaces necessary for the house are, are being provided and, and these are um, more usable than, than the space. Okay. And the other question I have when I was out there, um, the driveway, is, is, although it's shown hatched here really wide, it, it goes down to eight feet given the uh, and eight feet, like four inches, given the stairway that's here, and then there's a planter, and then another planter along this way. And did transportation staff look at the driveway? Uh, transportation staff did go out to the site. I the the city standard for driveway width is ten feet mm -hmm. um, for new projects. Um, but transportation planning staff didn't recall looking at that issue specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd, I'd recommend a condition that um, the applicant have transportation planning staff review 
the width of the driveway against the, the city's design standards. Transportation planning has the authority to grant waivers in some instances. So if it, if um, if there's existing development there that isn't easily moved or part of the original construction, um, then waivers are are granted on a case by case basis. So I would I would recommend that uh, transportation planning look at this before it goes back to APR. So you recommend transportation staff review width of driveway against design standards prior to uh, ABR. And, um, and, the rec and their recommendations be incorporated into the project? Right. And ultimately in plan check, transportation will, will look at this again. And also the, to add to that condition that the, the driveway be shown accurately on the site plan. Okay, great, thanks. Um, would you like to state your name and provide additional comments? Uh, well, my name is Ben Werner and I'm the applicant. Um, I'm Daphne Romani, the architect, and uh, I don't have any additional comments. And I'm Jack Reed. Jack what? Reed. Reed? Yeah, I, I, um, I, one comment that came up is that indeed the narrowest spot on the driveway, which is not shown on the current plans, exists where the stairwell or the staircase is here and the and the retaining wall associated with uh, with the property line fence so 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 widening that would be um, would be very very challenging <laughs> well and that's what the waiver process is um, I noticed yeah I don't know the stairway if it I, yeah, I don't know when you know the stairway was part of the original construction or not there is a low like brick wall and I was looking to see if there's a picture and I didn't have a camera when I was out there but along the fence line that kind of pushes in too, so it might be just some modification um, or changes, modification makes a different word, mm -hmm. some changes in this area just to make it wider. I don't, it, you're not going to have to move that retaining wall that's on the property line, yeah. um, just to look, have transportation look to get as much width to get the car to be able to maneuver down as possible. Mm -hmm. So I don't envision you having to remove the wall. Right. right. The, wall. The, the porch was there, put there in 1923. Okay, so probably and part of the original part? So th that is the narrowest part between mm -hmm. the porch and the retaining wall, and we've had uh, U-Haul trucks go back down there, so. Okay. Well, it might not be an issue. We'll just have transportation staff right. look at it um, and make recommendations if necessary, and if there's none necessary, then there's none necessary, but at least they looked at it with um, access particularly in mind. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any additional comments? No? Not at the moment. Okay. So I'd like to open the public hearing. Seeing no one in the audience. So I got a letter from Ms. Paula. That's very... Expressing concerns with the project. So I'll close the public hearing. I went out to the site and... Uh, Mr. Warren has shown me around. Thank you for uh, showing me all the elements. Um, in regards to the parking modification, uh, I agree with staff's assessment that given the size of the uh, as-built yurt, it's small, it's 415 square feet, um, the, the demand we've assigned to units, I think, is less than 850. 750? I think 750. 750 is, is one. So um, part of the parking findings, parking modification findings, is that um, there's adequate space on site and it won't cause an impact on the neighboring streets. So given our the anticipated demand, it would be met within the three spaces proposed on site. Um, in regards to the interior setback modification, I also uh, don't have a concern with the meditation dome in its location, it's low profile. It's it's not habitable. It um, it is habitable actually. Well, <laughs> not in our terms. In that, <laughs> I guess when you meditate, you might fall asleep in it. Yeah. But um, 
you know, it's not, it doesn't meet our definition of floor area. It's, right. it's too small. So um, given those issues, I find that it's supportable in that location also. I would, um, I should probably talk about the conditions first. So staff is proposing three conditions, and you've read them, and you're fine with the conditions? Uh, I, I'm fine with everything that's been said, but which are those three conditions again? The uncovered parking space, so mm -hmm. providing the uncovered, which you're showing. Right. Um, yeah, uh, yes. And I, the carport, yeah. and then the manoeuvring area. The condition two, though, will need to be re revised, because if they're proposing to use a portion of it for the parking area, it says the area of the carport shall be landscaped subject to review and approval by the Architectural Board of Review. The, a minimum size vehicle turnaround area or oncoming parking space as alone, allowed by the zoning ordinance may be provided in the carport area subject to review and approval by transportation planning staff. So maybe the area of the carport not proposed for parking shall be landscaped? Or what did you envision? Uh, so what, what was discussed, and, um, and I encourage the applicant uh, to join in mm -hmm. with transportation planning staff was to have uh, a 24 foot deep parking space to allow for some turnaround area in addition to the parking area. Mm -hmm. So the transportation planning was, um, it would be an 18 foot deep parking space with an, an additional six feet of turnaround area behind the parking. Okay. Uh, so it would be um, both. Well, my, my con, yeah, if it's landscape, then you can't park on it. So I was just thinking the area of the actually removed as built carport, not proposed for parking. Because you, oh, you're meaning right. like the setback yeah, so area. The, the second sentence is, is, the second sentence is fine. To, um, right, yeah. I so agree. I just want to specify that. that. So it'll say the area of the removed as built carport, not proposed to be used for parking, shall be landscaped. That's a good clarification. So then if it's, that would also cover it if it just, if you decide, well, that's not really going to work in this area, we want to put it over here, mm -hmm. then this this area is not used for parking and needs to be landscaped. So right. it, it covers Gives it. Gives the flexibility, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only change I have that I would suggest regarding your, the staff's proposed mm -hmm. conditions. And then I would want to add the, the new condition regarding the width of the driveway be reviewed mm -hmm. for consistency or um, against the, uh, the design standards prior to the architecture board review. Okay. And then any recommendations be incorporated into the project. And it may, they may find that there can't, it, they can't improve the existing situation anymore. And um, given the size of the year, it's only one, it only demand for one parking space and that low volume might not warrant it. Mm -hmm. But I do want them to take a, a, a look sense. at it for the driveway. Okay, so with those, with the revised <coughs> conditions and the new condition, I can make the findings, but I'd like to specify, um, just kind of put the size in, in the findings, so it kind of leads to more of the thought process. So the only thing I want to add to the parking modification finding is on the second line, flip mm -hmm. the staff report just over. So the second line where it starts parking space for the yurt, I just want to add in parking space for the 415 square foot yurt. Mm -hmm. So it just shows that it is a small mm -hmm. structure. Okay. And then um, in the second finding for the interior setback modification, the third line where it starts prevent unreasonable hardship period, the setback encroachment four, and I'm just going to add the as-built dome. And then um, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth line down where it starts property due to the dome's small size, um, I was going to put um, its maximum six foot tall and 78 square feet, and then also height less than. Oh, wait, how's it? Okay, actually, I was going to put the property due to the dome's small size, which is 78 square feet, and height, which is six foot tall, and the screening provided by the adjacent wall, and then just cut off the last sentence. Mm -hmm. um, so again, just specifying the size that they're small, right. the domes, you know, small and short is fence is 
typical fence is either six or eight feet. In your case, it is eight feet, so it's it's shorter than what a fence could be. Right. So, with those revisions to the findings, I and the uh, revised and added condition approval, I can approve your project. Right. And my action is appealable to the Planning Commission within 10 calendar days, and they also have oversight authority of all my actions, and if they felt this warranted additional discussion before them, they could call it up during that same 10-day appeal period, and if either of those were to occur again, we'd contact you. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. And I adjourn the meeting. This is unreadable.